Hello YouTube, it's your favorite denture wearer, <laughs> with no teeth in, again. Um, I have officially reached 5,000 views on my channel. Yay for me. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, still not as many subscribers as I like, but that's okay. I got, I've been getting some uh, messages from people that... They really don't need to watch all of my videos. They, you know, type something in looking for information for uh, wearing dentures and stuff. And whether it be gluing in or something like that. They've only watched a few of my videos, but they got the answers that they needed. And I've been getting a lot of great messages from people thanking me for uh, providing them with the bluntness and and the information that they, they were looking for that everybody else beat around the bush about. I uh, had one amazing message from a gentleman, um, Terry Blinstrup. He uh, had his dentures for almost nine months now, and he'd been attempting to eat apples. And everybody that he talked to said, you can't do it. can't do it with dentures. Um, he looked up on YouTube eating apples with dentures. Everybody on there was talking about how they cut them up, they dice them up, they core them. They peel them, um, all this other stuff. And then he saw my, um, I don't know what it's called. Uh, huh. Anyway, he saw the picture of me sitting there with an apple in my hand. And, it, you know, it said eating apple week seven or whatever. And he clicked on it on the video for week seven. And it was the shortest video I've ever made for YouTube. And all it does is shows me biting through an apple and chewing it up for, you know, a few minutes, and that's it. And he said that hit home with him so hard that I was doing that in my seventh week. And he was in his ninth month and still couldn't eat an apple. And it hit home with him so hard that he told his wife not to cook dinner, not to make him breakfast. He wasn't going to take a lunch to work. He was going to carry around an apple until he could eat it. And he said it took three days, and at the three-day mark, no matter how hard he tried, it, it, it hurt. After the third day, or during the third day, he watched my video again, and he caught on to the point where I said, it hurts like hell right now. So he bore through the pain and took his first bite of an apple, and he said he sat in his office and cried for an hour. He chewed, he chewed up that bite, and he set the apple down, and he took a picture of it and sent it to his wife, and he started crying, because he'd never thought that he'd be able to do it, and he said that my video uh, pushed him to the point where he knew that if I could do it in week seven, there was absolutely, in his words, there was absolutely no reason why he couldn't in his ninth month. I am so happy for him. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of messages from people that are just, have gone back and looked at specific videos for help that they needed or encouragement that they needed or that little extra push they needed um, to do things that they know they should be able to do or things that they've been wanting to do that they don't have anybody to push them except me. Um, I think that's fantastic. I, I think having 5,000 views now is fantastic. Um, I love the fact that I'm helping people. That was the whole point of doing this. You see me playing with my bottom jaw with my tongue. I have my teeth out. I have a bone sliver coming out right there. I can feel it with my tongue, but I can't feel it with my finger yet. Your tongue is much more sensitive. Um, and it's 7.20 at night. I take my teeth out about 6 or 7 now because it stays light longer. Uh, so I can work outside longer. Um, and I took my teeth out about a half an hour ago and realized I've got a bone sliver coming out down here. And that should be about the final one. Um... Once that one comes out, that'll be the last one. Um, 
so yeah, along the lines of getting messages from people, I don't have as many subscribers as I want. Uh, I've had a couple of messages from people that have said, I'm not going to subscribe to your channel, but thank you for this particular video. Um, this is exactly what I needed to, to push myself to go forward. And I think it's fantastic because even if people aren't subscribing, that, that's okay. As long as, they're, as long as my videos are helping people. That was the whole point of doing this series was to help people along. Um, I think that for the most part, it helped me probably more than it helped anybody else. Um, first of all, I, I, I needed to make more videos of, of me progressing, and I didn't want, you know, I, I didn't want to stretch the videos out for years on end, you know, make hundreds and hundreds of videos. Um, I think that would have been too much for people. Um, so, progressing as fast as I did... I was able to make the videos in sequence and and see the progression. I, now, did I expect to progress this fast? Not at all. I did not expect to progress this fast. I did not expect to be eating everything in my fourth month. And I haven't even had the hard green lines done yet. So, no, I did not expect to progress this fast. Although, I do push myself very, very hard. I probably push myself harder than most people do. Um, that's because I was the runt in my family. <laughs> I was the runt. Now I'm not. Now I'm bigger than everybody in my family. I have been since I was about 18. Um, but all my life growing up, I was the runt. Everybody was bigger than me. I was the youngest. And when I hit about, oh, I don't know, 16 or 17 years old, I had a growth spurt and I outgrew everybody. And then everybody else was the runt. So, but all my life growing up being the runt, I had to push myself harder to be able to do the things that my bigger brothers were doing. And to be able to prove to them, that no matter what my size was, or no matter what my mentality was, I could still do what they could do. And they were all quite a bit older than me, and quite a bit bigger than me. And so I've been a pusher of, of self, my entire life. When you're drinking coffee with dentures, you only feel the heat on your tongue. When you drink coffee without dentures, along with ice cream, the heat kind of feels good on the gums. Ah, man, that's good. I bet you got to be careful because your gums are real sensitive. Um, you don't want to burn them. You blister your gums, you'll be in hell trying to wear your dentures. Uh, glue mine in about um, midnight tonight again and wear them all day tomorrow. Um, for me, the, the, the night gluing trick works really well. Um, I had one message from a guy that said he glued his in, um, went to bed, Woke up in the morning, ate breakfast, they felt great, ate lunch, they felt great, ate supper when he got home from work, they felt fantastic, and he couldn't get the top one out of his mouth. <laughs> so he wore it to bed the next night, and ate breakfast, lunch, and supper the following day, and still couldn't get it out of his mouth, and thought he was going to have to go to the doctor to have it removed because it was, it was sticking so well. And that's so why I messaged him back and I asked him, I said, are you prying forward with your thumb or are you prying up? And he sent me back a message. He said he's prying up with his thumb. And I said, well, that's no different than taking a bite. You put your thumb behind your top teeth and you pull forward. And that'll break that palate loose, at which point you can actually slip your tongue up underneath the palate and hold it there. And then reach up inside your top in your top lip and pull that denture down. So he did that, and he and he sent me back a message about an hour later, and he was like, "Oh, you know, I finally got it to break loose," and he said it's holding. You know, he's going to do that every night from now on. Um, 
because they hold so much better during the day because that glue sets up at night while you're sleeping. You're not moving that denture around. You're not drinking anything interfering with the glue. You're not eating anything, you know, making the denture move around while it's trying to set. So he was extremely happy with that. I've had a couple of other messages from people that said that it just doesn't work for them. Um, they don't clench when they sleep, apparently, so trying to glue in at night doesn't work. They wake up in the morning, their denture's crooked, it's not right, and, and they have to pry it out of their, you know, it's set up real well, but they have to pry it out of their mouth and then re-glue it again because to get it right and things like that. And I think I pointed that out when I said, you know, try gluing at night. I said, I think, I pointed that out, I believe that if you clench to try to glue at night, but if you don't, it won't work for you. So the messages I'm getting from people that say, it's not working for me because I don't clench. Um, yeah, I pointed that out. <laughs> um, yeah. Definitely got a bone slaver coming out. I may go without my teeth tonight. Give that, chance, give that bone slaver a chance to work its way out overnight and tomorrow. I may just not wear them for a day or two. Um, then again, I may forget. I may just go slap them in my mouth before I go to bed and not worry about it until the next day. I can just barely feel it and it doesn't hurt. I can just barely feel the edge sticking up. I can't feel it with my finger yet. But I can barely feel it with my tongue and your tongue is extremely sensitive compared to your fingers. So that means it's not even close to ready to come out yet. It'll be a week before it actually protrudes enough to, for me to even work it back and forth with my tongue and get it to come out. And I'm not going to go a week without my dentures. <laughs> Somebody had sent me a message and asked me if I wear the same shirt in every video. I do not. Most of my flannel shirts are, are black or gray. And this one looks like it's black or gray, but it's actually green. If you look at it really closely, it's green and blue. Uh, but sitting back at a distance, it looks like it's black or gray. No, I don't wear the same shirt in every video. Um, but I do have a lot of dark colored flannel shirts because working outside in the wintertime, when the sun's shining, darker colors draw in heat. So they keep you warmer than lighter colors. Lighter colors reflect the sun away from you. I want to draw that heat in when I'm outside working in the cold in the winter time. I want to draw that heat in so that I'm nice and warm and I don't have to worry about wearing, you know, 40 pound jacket and gloves and everything else when I'm outside working in the winter time. I would rather just wear a flannel shirt and have that heat draw in and wear black pants and have that heat draw in and keep me warm rather than uh, wearing bright colored clothes and the sun reflecting off of me and I'm cold the whole day while I'm working. So, the vapor pen wasn't working for me. So what I've done now is I have this little machine here and a little pouch of tobacco and cigarette tubes and as you can see that's empty okay that goes on this machine like this and then I load this with tobacco I close it chuck it back and forth it makes me a cigarette and what I'm doing is I'm only making a cigarette when I really need one so, in other words, I'm not buying them by the pack. Uh, I'm not buying packs of cigarettes where they're easily accessible to reach in and draw out. I rode my bike, motorbike for several hours yesterday. Didn't smoke at all. Uh, when I go outside to work, I'm not smoking because I've got something to do and I'm not going to take the time to make a bunch of cigarettes before I walk out the door. It makes it much easier for me that way. I will smoke less and less and eventually I'll just forget to make some. I won't have to worry about it. I will be able to quit this way, unlike trying to quit with vapor pen or something else. The vapor pen simulates smoke, but it doesn't smell like smoke. 
It doesn't feel like smoking. It doesn't feel like I'm holding a cigarette in my fingers. So yes, I will quit again. Um, probably before the six month mark when I get my soft relines. That's my projected uh, date, hopefully, to be done smoking before I, or not the soft relines, the hard relines. Sorry about that. Um, I want to be completely done smoking by the time I get my hard relines done on April 26th. I think that getting the hard relines done, the dentures will fit so much better and be so much more comfortable that I won't have the stress of gluing them all the time and and I can take them out, clean them, and put them back in. Um, I may be able to go sleep without them throughout the night, which is what I really want to do, um, and then get up in the morning, put them back in, and function throughout the day without any issues. When I get back to where I can do that, um, I don't see any reason why I would need to continue smoking. I would have a whole lot less stress um, with my dentures right now. They, you know, they're, they're, there's a lot of stress involved with my dentures right now. If I don't get that top one glued just right at night, if I don't use just the right amount of glue, it's either really tight and it feels like something's just squeezing the shit out of my top gum and it hurts every time I try to bite or chew. And if I don't use enough glue, that son of a bitch comes loose halfway through the day and it starts flopping around in my mouth and that just aggravates me. And... So it's, it's kind of a science for me to, you know, kind of a, a challenge for me to get the exact right amount of glue in there every single time, and, which I failed at several times. I failed and you've, in, uh, and I've told you about those times and it's, you know, I just rip the denture out of my mouth, put it in the cup and forget it. I'm done. I cannot glue it back in during the day because it takes forever for the glue to set up. Um, so on those days, you know, I'm still in my fourth month, dealing with frustrations and aggravations with my dentures. So, I may make things look easy, but not everything is as easy as you probably think. I'm not dealing with any more sores. I haven't had a sore since week five. So, I'm, that's fantastic. Uh, I love the fact that I don't have any sores. But, other than, a, you know, a couple of bone slippers that have come out, those, those have caused some sores. But the issues with gluing is a real big challenge for me because the bottom denture, like I said, still fits really well. So the only time I have to glue is if I'm going to bite through something like a Subway sandwich or something where I have to open my mouth really big. If I'm eating a hot dog or something like that, I don't have to glue at all. Potato chips, things like that. No issue. But if I'm biting through something where I have to open my mouth really wide, I do have to tack that bottom one in on, on the back just to keep it from flopping up when I'm trying to bite through a sandwich or something. But the top one is still five sizes too big and will remain that way until April 26th. So the frustration is still there trying to get that one to glue in. Okay, so that's it for this video. I am, I am ecstatic that these videos are helping you folks. Um, please share them with people that you know that are going to get dentures or people that you know that are struggling with their dentures. Um, like and subscribe and don't forget to leave me a comment or send me an email. Have a great night.